Any fifth graders here? Anybody 11 years old? No, okay. Well, the reason I... There's somebody who's 11 years old? Good. Alex, and are you an SSCP researcher? Are you one of the researchers? Are you here with a, as a family member? Family member. Well, the reason I tell this story is that I'm an astrophysicist, and I think that um, what's really cool from a personal vantage point in, in this place is that I had the honor of working here for eight years. And, I, you know, I know that everyone in this audience, likely everyone in this audience, will know what I'm about to say, but, but if you don't understand it, you know, you ask mom and dad, but I, I think you'll understand this. There are moments in our lives that are so powerful that they stop us in our tracks and we think about what we just saw, what we just experienced, and we are never the same again. Never. It changes us forever. There are these moments in time that do that. They could be something very personal that's only seen, you know, in your family, that you're hearing about in your family. It could be something the entire world sees. It could be something tragic. It could be something joyous. But there are those powerful moments. And I was 11 years old in July of 1969 when I saw something and it stopped me in my tracks and I knew I wanted to be a space explorer. What happened on July 20th, 1969? Moon landing. In July of 1969, Three astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, went up a gantry, an elevator, to the top of a 362-foot-high rocket. A 362-foot-high rocket is like a 36-story high building. It was a Saturn V moon rocket, and they went into a capsule at the top called the command module. It was known as Columbia. And when the systems were checked out, they got a go-ahead for launch. They launched from Florida. They went into orbit around the Earth. When the systems checked out in orbit, um, engineers at Johnson Space Center gave a go-ahead for a translunar insertion burn, and they were en route to the moon. And we were all following it back on, 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 at home on television. Is anybody, is anybody as old as me that remembers this? And what was really the most amazing thing is I, I was in Uniondale, Long Island. That's where my parents lived. We were moving to the big city, New York City, and I can close my eyes and see myself sitting on these moving boxes in the living room watching this little black and white television set. And on July 20th, 1969, I watched this, this astronaut in this bulky suit walk down this thing that didn't look like much of a ladder and for the first time in human history put a footprint on another world. I lived through that. I could go out at 9 o'clock Eastern time um, when I was watching this uh, in, in Uniondale and look up at the moon 240,000 miles away and realized that there were three people up there and I was never the same again. And, and what's really remarkable about that story for me is that I got to work here for eight years and every morning I would walk in from the street going up to my office on the third floor past Columbia. This is it. When I, when I first got excited about space, this vehicle was 240,000 miles away. This is the real thing. It's, in, uh, it's, it's three inches under my fingertips. This took Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins to the moon and brought them safely back. I may be biased, but I think that this is the most remarkable thing the human race has ever built, ever. Because this vehicle represents us leaving Earth gravity and going to another world for the first time in history. And it happened in 1969, 66 years after the first flight by the Wright brothers. Just 66 years after this, after the Wright brothers took to the, to the sky, we landed on the moon fulfilling that other promise, that other dream of generations. And now, we are living through this remarkable era again, and it's going unnoticed. 